Now this right here is the kind of system you would need a Unify system for. There's over 40 cables here. So we're gonna be using things like a switch. We're gonna be installing Wi-Fi access points. It's, it's a lot, you know what? Let's get to it, enough talking. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and install a 42U rack. Now due to the sheer volume of devices that we're gonna be installing here, it just makes sense to go with the full light rack. For the rack, we went with a Stantec 42U four poster rack. Now this rack comes with pretty much everything you will need for this setup. I mean, it comes with the caster wheels because that's also a very important factor. We want to be able to move things around in this room in case we need to get access behind the rack. It comes with, you know, cable management as well. So if you're using things like a seven foot, eight foot long patch cord, you can wrap it around this unit. It also comes with, a, you know, uses a cage knot, right? So you can actually, you don't have to worry about ever stripping out your, you know, the rack. So you use this cage knot. This is the thing that takes the beat in. But you know what? Let's get started to installing this unit and uh, let's see how it goes. Every gate build begins with a foundation and for us, that foundation was the StarTech 42U 19 inch open frame rack. This isn't just a rack, it's the backbone of the entire setup. A four post adjustable depth frame which can be extended from 22 to 40 inches. Its mobility and solid frame felt like the perfect blend of form and function. Alrighty, so we're done installing the rack. I mean, I'll say it's a pretty nice rack. I actually love it. Nice, clean, sturdy. So the next thing we're going to do is to start to populate this rack with devices. We we're going to start out with installing the patch panel first, but we kind of ran into a little bit of a challenge here. We were going to use, you know, this guy, but it's kind of not befitting of this brand new rack. So this guy, it's going into the trash and we're going to get a new one. But for now, we're just going to use it as a placeholder and then populate all the rest of our device and come back to running the cables a little bit later. Let's go. At the base of the rack, we installed the StarTech adjustable vented shelf designed to hold up to 175 pounds, perfect for the Unread server. Its open vented design ensures that even under heavy load, it dissipates efficiently. For centralized power, we opted for a unified PDU. To maintain a clean, hidden look, we mounted it at the back of the rack, making slight adjustments to the height until it aligned seamlessly behind the smart ops. This ensures that the ports are still easily accessible. We dedicated a 16-inch deep vented shelf to house the ops and service provider equipment. The Lutron op responsible for managing the motorized shades was hardwired for maximum reliability. We hit a little bit of a stand last time, so we had to stop this project temporarily while we waited for materials to come in. We finally received those materials, so we're going to go ahead and finally just wrap up this project. We have a few things left, you know, terminate the cables, install patch panels, and finally get all the ports activated. To stay true to the centralized model we envisioned for this rack, we integrated my brother's existing printers. This approach kept everything organized and accessible in one place. We placed the HP desk jet printer and the labor printer on a heavy duty full depth rack shelf. After setting up the printers, we proceeded to install another 16 inch half depth vented shelf to support the AVR system. This shelf was carefully selected for the airflow and space efficiency. To cater to my brother's love for gaming, we dedicated a 16 inch vented tray to house his PS5. It's hardwired into the system for a seamless low latency experience and connected to the AVR via HDR. Since Bluetooth 5.1 has a range of 33 feet and the theater room is only 15 feet away, the controller performs without a hitch. For on the fly troubleshooting, we've included a portable display mounted on a sliding keyboard shelf tray. This pullout tray is made of heavy duty steel and supports up to 55 pounds and also extends 22 inches deep to fit perfectly into the rack. This tray also provides space for a keyboard. To power the house speakers, we initially opted for a Wii amp, but it wasn't powerful enough to drive the four Polk 70 LT speakers in the main area. As a result, we upgraded to a Sonos amp mounted on another half depth tray. The Sonos amp delivers 120 watts per channel at 8 ohms, providing clear, high quality sound. It supports AirPlay 2, direct streaming from popular music services, and can easily integrate into the smart home ecosystem. One of the most satisfying steps was organizing the speaker wires running from the adjacent home theater room. Since we went with a Dolby 5.1.2 setup, we installed seven individual speaker wires, each with left and right channels, including the subwoofer connection. Additionally, we routed six small speaker wires, four for the insulin Polk 70 LT speakers in the main area, and two for future outdoor speakers on the deck. We carefully routed each cable through the rack's built-in cable management channels to keep everything tidy and easy to follow. We also labeled all the Ethernet and speaker cables as we progressed, ensuring no confusion during termination and patching. We opted for Cat5e cabling for this build. 
While CAT 6 and CAT 7 offer higher bandwidth and shielding for longer distances, they also come at a higher cost. Since the distance we are working with are manageable, CAT 5e provides reliable 10 gig speeds and keeps costs reasonable. In a home setup, the added expense of higher category cables often outweigh their benefits. For clean organization, we installed two 24-port unified key connect patch panels. The builder's original cables were pre-terminated with LG 45 mm ends, and since we had to reroute them to the new rack location, we didn't have much slack to work with. To maintain consistency, we also terminated the additional new cabling we installed with LG 45 ends and used LG 45 keystone couplers in the unified patch panels. This allowed us to simply plug all the cables into the backside of the patch panel. This method makes it easy to add new devices later down the line using standard patch cords. While it introduces more potential failure points, it's the most practical solution given the constraints and the need for flexibility. We hit another stack, so we had to pause this project for another two weeks. And that's because of the switch. My brother previously had the 24 port PoE switch, but seeing as he had more than 30 rods in this new space, the 24 port wasn't going to cut it anymore, so we decided to upgrade it to a 48 port switch. Not just any regular 48 port PoE switch, we decided to go with the Ether Lightning switch. The Ether Lightning switch is Unify's newest line of switches. Now, it has a really unique feature the cables light up. Yeah, that's right. The, not just the LED light, the physical cable itself lines up. So we're going to be replacing the switch and as well as using Ether Lightning cables. We're going to be using the combination of the Ether Lightning switch and Ether Lightning cables to beef up this setup. Now come with me and let's get this set up and then I'll tell you more about this switch at the end of this video. For patch cords, we selected a 0.15 meter patch cord, which were appealing as they were sold in packs of 24, making them perfect for a 48 port patch panel setup. The top patch panel stretches a bit more than I would typically like, but given Unify's shipping and return process, which isn't as seamless as Amazon, we decided to stick with them to avoid further delays in the project. In hindsight, an alternative approach could have been installing one 24 port patch panel above the switch and another below, but we'll save that idea for future updates. We connected the switch and the UDM Pro using a 10 gig SFP transceiver. While DAC cables offer low power draw and fixed length, SFP modules provide more flexibility and compatibility. Although they consume slightly more power, around 0.8 watts, their versatility has made them a reliable choice for our build since day one. The full network rack installed for my brother's house is finally complete. Now this network rack has become the central hub for connectivity, security and entertainment. The entire house is fully wired up, every TV, sonar speaker, desktop computers, cameras, it's all hardwired for a consistent and reliable connection. To top it off, we've also installed a unified wireless access point on every single floor to ensure a full wireless coverage throughout the entire house. Because we went with a 42 wheel rack, we have extra spaces for other essentials like printers. It has a regular HP DexJet printer as well as a label maker printer at the back. Now, on the downside as well, we've also added a screen in here. It's a portable monitor screen that allows us to be able to manage the server that's down here. You know, the server is remotely accessible and configurable, but as you know, sometimes things don't always go as planned. So the ability to be able to physically manage the server with this portable monitor or, you know, plug into any of the other systems here just to see what's going on on the back end. And this guy is actually retractable. So you can pull it in and you can push it back in there. I love that setup. We also went with a very portable and minimal Keychron keyboard and a Logitech mouse combo just to make sure that it fits within that tray as well. We also installed insulin speakers which is why we have the Sonos app down there. So that's just for pure music and airplay and Chromecast and you know in the main area the Sonos app controls that system there. We also have a Yamaha AVR system here which connects back to the theater room for a 5.1.2 surround sound system for an immersive experience. We've also included a PlayStation 5 here that also goes back to the theater room for that gaming experience as well. The theater room is still work in progress, but check out this channel, it's gonna have a full video of the theater room. Since Apple HomeKit is its primary smartphone platform, I've installed an app on its own RAID server down there called Scripted. This app exposes all of the Unify cameras into HomeKit, so that way it can remotely manage and monitor its camera frames from within the Home app. This server not only does that, it also runs things like Plex for all the multimedia management as well as serves all of the storage needs. We've installed the 10 gig NIC card on the server as well as using the 10 gig port 
on the ether lightning switch that way he has 10 gig access between the server and all the way down to his computers upstairs as well at the heart of the network is the unified dream machine that manages the network security routing and threat management through its ips and ids capabilities it also acts as an nvr for all the security cameras providing centralized and secure monitoring and storage of all the footages from all the security cameras across the entire house. For all the wired devices, the Ether Lightning 48 port here connects all of those devices and we use the Ether Lightning one foot cables for a clean and organized layout. The Ether Lightning switch has light indicators on them. Each of the different colors there are basically indicators of the speed that current device is connected at. For example, the blue here, it means that it is at 10 gig and then the yellow there means it's running at 100 meg. This switch also offers PoE capabilities to things like all the cameras as well and the access points. For power management, we went with the Unify Power Distribution Unit. Now this will help protect all the equipment here from things like surges through its inbuilt surge protector. You can also remotely manage all of the interfaces on the power distribution unit from the Unify app as well. It also has some USB-C ports as well, which we've used to plug some of the ops, as you can see right here from some of the smart home system that we use in this space. With this 42U rack, we've centralized everything from security, routing, switching, entertainment, multimedia, and even things like printers into a centralized, organized system ready to meet every need that my brother has in his home. This setup right here definitely warrants and justifies using a unified system. This system right here is just part of the entire system my brother is currently building out. If you'd like to see some of the other crazy setups that he's working on right now, like the full build of his cinema room or the setup of his content creator space or even his multimedia and living room areas, make sure to check out his channel. I'm going to leave links down in the bio. If you found this video very helpful, leave comments down in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you guys. As usual, Ty here, checking out.